This is a timely and consequential event as we seek to translate a big vision into action. We made significant progress at COP28 under the leadership of my brother here from the UAE, notably with a commitment to triple global renewable energy capacity and double energy efficiency by 2030. Last year's inaugural Africa Climate Summit was an important step towards COP28. African heads of state adopted the Nairobi Declaration with climate positive growth as a new paradigm for industrialization and development. A key pillar of this future is Africa's vast and underutilized renewable energy resources. In this room, we know the reality of a global disparity in energy, in energy access. Nearly 600 million Africans lack access to electricity, while another 1 billion are without clean cooking options. In Sub-Saharan Africa, annual energy access gains of um, around 30 million people barely keep pace with a population growth of 28 million people each year. So you balance the number of people that are coming into the space with those that are getting electricity, it means we are running on a treadmill. This trend imperils progress across the entire Sustainable Development Goals and Agenda and also imperils our Paris Agreement goals. This week, we adopted the Pact of the Future to improve our world. It requires our commitment to implement and realize the ambitions of the Pact. We will continue to push for a course correction of the global financial and investment gaps and the unfair financial systems. Africa receives less than 2%. Sometimes it's say 3% of global investment in renewable energy, despite being home to 60% of the world's best solar opportunities. Last year, the continent added less than 3 gigawatts of renewable energy, while the world saw a record addition of nearly 500 gigawatts. So, you know, 3 gigawatts with a potential of 60%. That tells you the disparity. Africa must pursue industrialization and economic growth to tackle the crippling energy poverty. Although the continent is resource rich and reliable or expensive energy limits, our ability to harness these resources for development. High capital costs and economies of scale mean that investors require secure offtake agreements as a mechanism of de-risking their investment. Establishing anchor industrial demand, driven by energy intensive industries, is crucial for securing these investments. We have a significant opportunity as the world to seek and expand and diversify value chains, particularly for energy transition. However, not all industrial development is beneficial Historically, exploitation of Africa's resources has not yielded benefits for its people. We must avoid repeating these mistakes of the past. And that is why we have made a decision as African heads of state to re-engineer the Africa Union. I have been mandated by my colleagues to reform the institutions of the Africa Union so that we can make it fit for purpose, give ourselves voice, and do the right things to attract investment in spaces that are important, as in climate action. This is why I am also driving the Africa Green Industrialization Initiative, which we launched at COP28, and now advancing with a group of global leaders this week. Expanding energy is critical for Africa Green Industrialization Initiative's agenda. Next month, together with IRENA, we are hosting the first accelerated partnership for renewables in Africa, that forum in Nairobi, and we look forward to
to hosting many of you. Ladies and gentlemen, as we continue our discussion on mobilizing finance, it is also important that we keep this approach in mind and focus on both supply of and demand for renewable energy at the forefront. By doing so, we can unlock ideas, partnerships, and approaches expanding our range of solutions. With Africa's unmatched climate competitiveness, we can offer global solutions that grow our economies, create jobs, and dignified livelihoods. We can generate healthy financial returns. Let me repeat that. We can generate healthy financial returns. I know there are people here listening. But we need systems and tools that truly work for Africa and by extension for the world. The world has the means and technologies needed to achieve the tripling goal by 2030. But there are numerous pathways to reach this target. Without a deliberate, a disciplined, and honest approach, the development divide may widen. The power of choice in a, is in our hands, literally and figuratively. Let's wield it wisely and make it count. I thank you.